Hey there everybody, welcome back to Paper Mario Color Splash, this is Spiraling Helix. Last time, after finishing the Crimson Tower and rescuing the first big pain- Oh my goodness, there's a bucket on the tower. How did I not realise that? Anyway, last time we spent our time doing many optional things, including the Rochambeau Temple, number one at least. But enough sidetracking, this time we are going to move straight on to Sun Glow Ridge. As I think our good buddy, the Red Big Painster, has done us a little favour. Look at that, Mario. You see what I mean by the power of paint? The Big Paintstar did all of this by itself. Now the Scarlet Gate is as good as new. And not at all called the Crimson Gate like I said in the last episode. Anyway, let's head on through. Give me music! In a moment. Alright, we're in. I smell another paint star around here somewhere. Let's go find it. Give me music! Yes, thank you very much, game. Here we are in Sun Glow Ridge, but you want some of this, pretty boy? I'll slap that moustache off your face! Mario, your preemptive hammer and jump strikes will grow more powerful every time you find a big paint star. If an enemy is weak enough, you might just be able to instantly squash him with your hammer and not have to battle at all. Well, let's give that a shot by jumping. Yes, what Huey said there is very important to note. Jumping will still initiate the battles for the most part. Or should I say... It depends on how much damage you do in one hit. Our preemptive strikes will do more damage, yes. But our hammer currently does a little bit more damage than our jump. Which is really weird to say. Oh, thank you for rescuing me from that tree and repainting me too. Those slurping lunatics chased me up this tree and then drained all my color. They ruined trees for me forever. Well, I don't know how trees can be ruined for you, but okay. As I was saying, the hammer strikes will tend to do more damage, at least in the first half of the game. That's a good item! Ugh! I just came out here for a picnic, and look what happened. Sigh. I miss the days of plentiful paint, when we could even bathe in paint if we wanted. Please, Mario, find our precious paint stars as soon as possible. Yes, I have to say the word sigh out loud. I'm sorry, guys. But we have a new, new enemy that I'm not fighting because right down here, there's even more of them. Nice. This isn't a new enemy at all. We fought these on Daffodil Peak. What am I thinking? I'm... See you after the fight. Okay. Let's avoid fighting the Spinies. We've seen them before. I... Ye you know what? I'm gonna show off one of the new cards that we just collected that I neglected to mention. We just got a brand new card called an Iron Jump. An Iron Jump. However you pronounce it, there is an R in there. The Iron Jump allows you to jump on spiked foes even though you are de they're spiked and you normally take damage. Basically, you negate taking damage and you deal out the damage instead. Very good and makes the normal jump cards effective. What was going on with that spiny? It effectively makes the normal jump cards useless. There's no worn out variants, but on the other side, it doesn't go up to the higher variants that jump cards typically do. So, a bit of give and take. They're probably out of time. But bringing that up here reveals a nice bridge for us. And painting the nice flowers. Sun Glow Ridge, it's just a nice, peaceful level. You know, it's awfully quiet around here. That's never good. I've got a really bad feeling about this, Mario. 
The last time I felt this way, I caught someone mixing eggshell and flat paints. Do you realize how? Did you see that? Some kind of missile just landed in those faraway hills. Step on it, Mario. Uh, okay, Huey, I'm on it. I'm on it. I mean, if there's one thing I hate, it's the game taking up my music. Try hitting this. Yep, okay. I will hit that log with the unfell hammer. But yes, how... Amazing, nice, peaceful music is now gone. Dang it! Kamek, why? Okay, what have you got for me this time? Is it that third and final curse? Please be that one, because it's the best one to have. No, my cards are just completely hidden. And I wasn't looking at them either. Um, I'm going to use these two. Neither of them take colour, so that's okay, I guess. No, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with that. Now, as you'll see, there are even more colours of Shy Guys. We have green colours and pink colours. Thank goodness that killed. I did not mean to hit it that early. But that means in total there are five coloured Shy Guys, which means for each different type of Shy Guy, be it... A straw like slurp guy or a spike helmet guy. There are five different colors that we need to get for the enemy cards, which is why doing that for the museum sucks. But I can kill the Goombas, can't I? Yes, I can. And in first striking enemies like that, you can even sometimes find that they will drop their enemy cards too. Now, right here, we do indeed have a new enemy. That's right, if you thought there weren't enough Shy Guys, I hope you were ready for those sniffets. It's a Shy Guy with a mask. Yay! But more than that, the sniffets take a beating. Like seriously, two worn out jumps to take him out. In fact, I need to make sure I don't mess up this worn out jump on the Slurp Guy, otherwise I'm gonna have to keep Going. Nice. Okay. Now the Sniffets, unlike the Shy Guys, they will not dash towards you. They will instead shoot some little pellets at you, dealing, I believe it's three damage each? Something along the lines that I'm sure we will see later on. Here is that unfurl block that you might hit, get by... I, I don't know how you find out that's there, in all honesty. But... Over to the left is probably the optional cutout that I miss the most. Right underneath this tree here. So let's cut along these zigzaggy lines in the other dimension that is on my gamepad screen. To reveal three different types of hammers. The only three hammers there are, I think. Are there only three hammer variants? Wow, there's a lot more jump variants, but I guess it is Mario Jumpman Mario. But heading along with this nice boppy music that I'm talking over, because we'll hear it later. Trust me. I just want to get my good normal everyday level music back, guys. Okay, maybe it's through here. It wasn't through here, it's still another whole screen away, a whole nother room away, and I just want my music back. <laughs> Ugh, something smells terrible around here, like paint mixed with stinkier paint or something. It's coming from over there somewhere. Let's go check it out. You, I'm, I'm on a Yui, and I have to bring up this point now. This level 
I'm, I'm not gonna say kind of sucks. It's a nice, easy level, and gotta say this is one of the best cards, by the way. A spin jump, we will use that later. But this level, Sungloy Ridge, it's kind of boring compared to the other levels. Just the scale we've had. Like, look at Ruddy Road where it rolls up half the darn level. Mario, I was running for my life when they drained my color. Thanks for saving me. I'm going to continue running for my life now. Okay, let's just ignore them. Oh, looks like we can head. Man, what's with this place? First the stinky paint, now a faulty ramp. What's next? Improper soil slopes. Hmm, I guess we'll have to take the long way round. A Goomba card, nice. I've already got one for the museum, so I'll probably never use this. I reckon, but I guess it's a new enemy because it's wearing green because that's how this game works and a single worn out jump doesn't even kill us. Oh my goodness, I I'll just use up my worn out cards. Something I didn't mention in the last episode, when you collect a big paint star, there will be new cards to purchase in the shop in Prisma Cardware. That said, I don't feel like I ever need to buy cards because I always tend to have a good stock of cards. But you can, if you want to be very quick with your battles and not have a stupidly eat, like hard time or take the difficulty out, just buy some cards from the shop. Seriously, buy all the big cards, all the double jump cards, and you'll be fine! That's the frog suit. It has almost no purpose. I would... I'm never gonna use it. I'm gonna be blunt. I'll probably use it once to show it off if we collect another. But it's going in the museum and never coming out. Anyway, up here, the source of those rolling logs. Looks like we have a forced battle with five shy guys. One more than always makes it really fun to do. Thanks, game. Very, very handy. Well, I think I'll use one of my triple worn out hammers and a worn out jump that I think I won't need to use anyway, but I want to get rid of it because they suck. And a one. And an excellent. And that didn't even kill them all. But that one certainly will setting me up for the last perfect bonus. Oh yeah. Nice and easy, a whole lot of red paint that I don't need, and a couple of toad workers. Our sawmill was attacked! Those guys better not have rolled any of our logs around or had any fun with them at all. While I was lying there color drained, I had the most terrible nightmare. I dreamed that this bad guy named Watt took over our log factory. Was the whole thing really a dream? Nice little reference there to Mario 2 or Doki Doki Panic as it is ripped off from. Anyway though, this log here, I didn't mean to do a paint splatter. But as we saw with the shy guys rolling them up, it did have an unfurl mark. So let's head over here. Again, if you're not sure what has an unfurl mark or not, usually the objects that do have them will bounce when you hammer them without the power of unfurling. No paintless spots over there. We're so close. It's worse than I ever could have imagined. Everything has been painted black! That thing that fell from the sky must have been a, a bomb full of black paint! I've got a really bad feeling about this. Well, there's a reason why that heart was right before that entranceway. Mario! Are you okay? You can't touch the black paint! 
This stuff is beyond toxic. Whatever you do, don't touch it. I'm sorry. I should have warned you. I need to make this right. Would you, uh, mind closing your eyes for a sec? I guess we'll do that too. Okay, you can open your eyes now. Alright, now let's never speak of this again. Look, there's a mini paint so I must have originally smelled. Onward! Sure thing, and the music is glorious once more. Now if I read this sign, there's something a bit p peculiar. Try hitting this with the unfurl hammer. Yes, I believe this log here is a red herring. And the sign actually has an unfurl mark on the back. Hmm, I wonder what that shy guy was up to. Anyway, don't miss these paintless spots on the bridge. Very easy to miss. I've spent a long time trying to find this one. But there's our own fell block. I have no idea how we're gonna hit it, but there it is. Let's keep our eyes peeled. I reckon that shy guy dropped down to a little secret chamber that might help us f um, reach that block. There we go. Words. Just got these. Shy guys dancing away and... That's right, if you go near them to paint in that spot, or you... Oh my goodness, I hit the right one, yes! Or if you go near the panel on the left to flip over the unfurl block, they get angry and they don't... They don't like it when you do that. So of course they are going to fight us. I think an e camera should take care of that sniff it. So let's colour that in, and with an ice fire fl ice fire fl ice flower, we should be all good, or nice, or great, excellent. Here we go. Oh, that's a slurp sniffer. That's a new enemy. This might not kill it then. This will kill it. Never mind. Easy, excellent. Again, better than a worn out hammer, just due to the fact it's an easy excellent. There we go, no enemy cards, sadly. But who cares about that? We have an upgrade to our paint hammer. Now we have a maximum amount of 240. Who could have seen that coming? Anyway, though, as the game goes on, we're probably not going to hit that limit too much. At least not yet. We haven't made it to the point where we are hitting a lot of the very big cards. We've already seen that that's the wrong thing to hit with the unfurl hammer. As you can see, it's very droopy. Though, the big cards, we've seen a big jump in big hammer card before, but we just haven't been able to get them easily, so we've never needed to colour them in. They are what use up the paint. I did say I'd let you guys listen to that one last time. Thankfully that sign bends physics and is a longer bridge than the giant roll of log that was right next to it. But with that, hitting these blocks does absolutely nothing except the camera angle does get fixed. Yes, that's right. We have a cutout here, which will lead us directly to the mini paint star. And with that, we have got quite possibly what I find to be the most boring level out of the way with just a very minor plot point thrown in for some reason. But that's right, we've done a course clear, the paint star is ours and we never have to come back here so long as I see that beautiful flag on the world map showing me I got 100%. Please show up because I hate that level so much. Come on, come on. Well, over there, looks like we've unlocked a toad house. 
Trust me, there's more behind that house than meets the eyes. Yes, 100%. And with that, guys, we have our new objective. Next time, we will head off to Chateau Chanterelle. So this has been Spiraling Helix. I'll see you next time and leave you to this amazing world map music that I failed to mention actually develops every time you collect a big paint star. See you guys next time, everybody. Bye-bye.